What up, what up, Zane here. And I actually went ahead and did a few problems. And so, but the next problem we're gonna be looking at is add two numbers. But to do that, we're gonna need to explore the concept of a linked list, which a linked list in Rust is actually rather difficult. <clears throat> if you don't know what a linked list is, it's basically uh, a group of nodes where one node points to the next node. So if we have, so let's create, let's just go ahead and create one. So list node, so we'll create a list node. And for the value, we'll have a certain value, an, an i32 value, so like zero or one or whatever, some number. And then for the next, we'll just point to another list node. But unfortunately, this isn't going to work for us. So if we look at this, it says recursive type list node has infinite size. So what does that mean exactly? Well, because we're creating this node and it has another list node in it, Rust doesn't know how much memory to reserve for this list because it could be infinite. So it's just gonna, it's gonna reserve for this list node, then go to the next one and reserve for that. So the reason for that is everything in Rust is allocated by default to the stack. And the stack needs to know, whenever we go through a block of code, the stack needs to know exactly how much memory to allocate. And then once you exit that code block, it deallocates all that memory it allocated. But because we, this could be infinitely, infinitely large, and it's not gonna know how many nodes are in the list. Um, if it did, we could, we could make it, uh, like suppose we could do something like, uh, a new value, and we could have another struct there. But anyway, I'm not even gonna try to do that. <laughs> um, but because it doesn't know, we need to allocate it dynamically. And so dynamically allocated memory is allocated to the heap rather than the stack. And the stack just means, and heap allocated memory just means it's allocated at runtime, uh, and it can dynamically decide how much memory to allocate at runtime. And so the way we do that is with a smart pointer. And in Rust, we have a smart, smart pointer called box. And this essentially just, all this does is, oops. Uh, all this does is just allocate this to the heap rather than the stack. And so it will know how much memory to reserve. And it'll just, so, so this will just basically allocate one value and that will be a pointer to the stack or to the heap, and then the heap will store the rest of it. And so uh, the reason we have to do it in box is because this is unsafe code in Rust. And so this basically, uh, this basically alloc box will allocate and deallocate that memory for us. So box is just manually deallocating this memory. And that's why it's called unsafe in Rust. And so we could create our own box by doing that, by having an unsafe block, which looks something like that. But we don't really need to do that right now. And, that, and so that, it's just unsafe because if we forget to deallocate it, that could be just memory that's never deallocated and then just take up RAM for no reason on your computer. And that's how a lot of bugs are caused. And that's basically the main feature of Rust is that you stop those uh, memory bugs. And so anyway, so let's just go ahead and create a node that, now that we can create one. So we'll say, we'll let our node equals list node, and we'll set the value equal to, we'll say zero. And next we'll set to, the type is going to be a box. So we'll have to create a new box. Uh, and then we'll put a new list node in that. Okay, and that list node will have a value of one in the next, oh wait a second, we can't just keep on, we can't do this because we essentially just have to keep on infinitely creating these things. Okay, so we're gonna need to revise this code a bit because we need to be able to have the list end at some point, right? So let's wrap this in a sum. So sum is just gonna allow us to have a none option, which is essentially null in Rust. Okay, so if we do that, then we can just have the last one be none. So this isn't pointing to anything. But this, let's see, what's this here? 
found, oh, this should be option, sorry. And so this should give us an error right here because this is not wrapped in an option, which sum. Okay, so that should get rid of all our errors. But this can be kind of a pain because, well, let's, first let's go ahead and create a new function for let for the list node. So we'll, we'll be able to create a new just by passing in a value. We'll create a new list node. So that's pretty simple. We'll just implement list node and then we'll have a function new and we'll pass in a value of an i32 type and then we'll just return uh, option box list node. Okay, actually we'll, we won't need that. We won't need that stuff yet. This will just return a plain old list node. So we'll create a new list node with the value and we can just use a shorthand to automatically assign the same variable just with a comma, just like in JavaScript if you're used to JavaScript. And we'll set the next equal to none. Okay actually no, no semicolon, and so that should return a new list node. So we can replace this code with new one. Okay, let's see. So that should be right, but if we want to create list node, you can see chaining all this stuff in just kind of makes, we're in nesting hell here because we have to put the new node in this one, and so that's kind of a pain. So we can, let's do, let's make a utility function that just converts a vector to a list. So let's create a new vector. Let's say vector equals zero, one, and we'll, and we'll use, and we'll create a function that will convert this to a linked list. So we don't have to write out all this stuff every sign single time we can just create this we can just write out the vector code so let's do that so, so we're basically utilizing the vector macro here so we'll create a function called to list and this will take in a vector and that will be a type vector and it'll be an i32 vector and we'll just return a now we need the option box listener because this is all going to be dynamically allocated. This this new list is going to be dynamically allocated too. Okay, so we'll just so we'll cycle through the value in the vector and we'll iterate through that vector. And then we'll just create a new list node. So we'll we'll let the new node and we'll need that to be mutable think so we'll create the new node will be list node and we'll create a new one based on the value and then for that next for new node dot next that will equal whatever next one so we're gonna have to start out at the end so we'll say the cur equals none and so then the net and so we'll start out with uh, the current which will be the end, and as you remember, the end ended with a none. So we'll set that equal to the cur, and then we'll set the cur equals to the new node that we just created. And then so then we'll work backwards uh, in creating new nodes in the list. So we'll, actually to do that, we're gonna have to have reverse this list so that it goes backwards. So it's gonna start with three. So it's gonna start with none, and then three will point to none, and then two will point to three, and so on until we get to the beginning. And then we'll return this curve. So we can print this out equals new node. What's wrong here? Oh, so we'll need to wrap this in, in a sum some box new whoopsies 
Okay, so that should make that go away. So then let's just print this out and we'll have to wrap this in the debug, uh, the debug display. And so we'll like to list vector. And so this doesn't work. Oh, well, that's not why. I meant to make it not work, but not because of that. So it does debug. Debug is not implemented for list node. So we can make uh, we. So i32 has a debug, and that could be dis displayed here. And so does option, and so does box, and all these do. So we can just inherit all these by adding a derive uh, tag up here. I guess I don't know what that's called. Um, and so now it's debug, and now it's listing all our nodes. So you can see that we turn this uh, vector into a linked list here. And so that will allow us to do our next problem, which is number two, which uses this. And you can see that we're using. So I I wrap this in uh, option box. I create a new type, and we can use that type right here. And then we can also use it whenever we need a linked list. Um, and so this is the next problem. Don't look at that. Don't cheat. Okay. And so we'll be doing this problem next. And this, the linked list is also used in like 20 other problems. So that's why I put it in a separate video.